Namaste, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Ashley Turner, yoga and meditation educator and licensed psychotherapist here in Los Angeles, California. So happy to be here with you. We are talking about the fifth key to leveling up as a leader, whether you're a yoga teacher, a wellness professional, a psychotherapist, a coach, a teacher, a mother, a parent, whatever you are, wherever you are in your work, in your world, how do we level up as a leader? And this is a series that we've been doing, and this is the definition that I've been working off of, which I love this definition of leadership. It's from David Foster Wallace. So if you haven't already, you can go back and watch the other four videos in this series. It's the last video in the series. So David Foster Wallace says, effective leaders are individuals who help us to overcome the limitations of our own selfishness, weaknesses, and fears. They get us to do harder, better, and more important things than we get ourselves to do on our own. And so for me, this is essential in life. And what I realized was as an entrepreneur and as a yoga teacher, as a yoga teacher, you're in the front of the room, as a coach, as a therapist, as a CEO, as an entrepreneur, you're leading a team, you're leading your students. As a parent, you're leading your family. How do we motivate and inspire people to do harder, better, and more important things that they would do on their own? How do we inspire them to overcome their limitations, their self selfishness, I would add their insecurity, their weaknesses, and fears? And the fifth key, so I'll go through the other four keys that we have already covered. The first one, now these are the five components of emotional intelligence. When, and I was listening to a Harvard, Harvard Business Review podcast, and they were saying that 90% of what sets effective leaders apart and CEOs, high-level managers apart, is when they have emotional intelligence. And I spoke in my last video that I've worked with a lot of CEOs, a lot of high-level entrepreneurs, CEOs that run billion-dollar companies. And I've asked every single one of them, what is the number one challenge in your work? And every one of them has said the same thing, people, human resources. So for most of us, the psychodynamics, learning how to deal effectively with other people is the most difficult thing. So the five components of emotional intelligence are self-awareness, number one. Number two is self-regulation, our ability to control our impulses. Three is our drive and motivation. Four is our empathy. We covered all those in four previous videos. Today, go back and watch them if you haven't already. Today, we're diving into social skill. Social skill is really a combination of these other four. It's our ability to relate to people. It's being friendly, having a purpose, being able to draw on these four other components, empathy, drive, motivation, self-regulation, and self-awareness. In other words, we are doing our own inner work so that our shit isn't running the show. We're not just projecting onto people we are able to do our work on the side, really take full 100% responsibility, and then show up fully for our coworkers, our colleagues, our team members, our clients, our students, our family, and be fully present to what's happening for them so that we can lead them through that. If we're running out our own trips, we can't show up in full presence for someone else. So great leaders are great at building and leading teams of people. We know how to amplify that the sum of the parts is greater, um, the sum of the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, right? So we know that coming together in teamwork, learning how to help other people break through their own social or emotional or mental, psychological weaknesses is a key component of being a good leader. So when, for example, on my team, when I can see a couple different people um, getting caught in control issues or boundary issues, it's my responsibility to be able to step in and say, hey, let's think about this, let's think about this. Um, here's a way that we might approach it more effectively, right? So we are also, as leaders under social skill, a, we are expert persuaders. We are able to we have the self-awareness and the empathy where we can tune in emotionally in psychology, it's called emotionally attuning to another person. We can 
tune in to feel into what's more effective to persuade someone, an emotional plea, an emotional response, or one based on logic and reason. There are certain situations where logic and reason are going to help persuade someone and motivate them, inspire them. And there are some situations where our emotional heart-centered connectedness is going to inspire someone to rise up. And so we can feel the difference sort of between that right and left brain. We also have a gift of collaboration. We want to build a team that's working together. We're able to see people's um, weaknesses and their greatness and help um, position people accordingly so they are in their genius zone. Our passion is contagious. Um, our social skill is that we are inspiring. And that means for you to be a leader and be inspiring, you have to be inspired. And that means you're taking care of yourself and what fuels you and what um, fires you up. I know that if I don't work out in the morning, I am not showing up as powerfully as possible. If I don't meditate in the morning, I am not inspired in the same way. And so those are key components. My nutrition, my sleep, all of those things are crucial for me to be inspired so that I can show up and be inspiring. We um, are motivating and we help people activate. We help light their fire. We see the embers that are ignited in them and we know how to blow on that, those embers so they catch fire. So we know how to drive solutions through motivation. So... It is very difficult to be skilled in all five aspects of emotional intelligence. Please go back and watch the other five, all five videos if you haven't already on emotional intelligence and leveling up your leadership. These are crucial. These skills can be learned. They can be practiced. They can be developed, um, especially with coaching and feedback. That's why it's so important to have mentors, to have coaches, to have people that are right there helping you cut through and see a little more clearly where you can excel. So um, these are, this is a skill set, as they were saying in, in the Harvard Business Review. Emotional intelligence is not a need to, it's not a nice to have skill set, it's a need to have skill set. We need to develop our own emotional intelligence to be effective leaders at this day and age. So if you are interested and you want to learn more about emotional intelligence, I am leading a live training. It is next month, September 10th through the 14th in Los Angeles in Venice, California. It's a meditation and mindfulness teacher training. This is really training you in the roots of mindfulness and emotional intelligence. So check it out, September 10th through the 14th. We only have a couple spots left. I would love to have you on there. I also have a business and leadership training coming up in November. That is also in LA. That is November 12th through the 16th. The business and leadership training live here in LA. We are drilling down on all this stuff. So check it out. The link is right below. And thank you all so much. Please like this. Share this with anyone you think might be might benefit from it. Tag someone in the comments below that you think might like it. And I want to hear from you in the comments below. What is the number one um, skill in emotional intelligence that you need to work on? Is it self-assessment, self-regulation? motivation and drive, empathy, or social skill. Those are the five keys of emotional intelligence and leadership. Tell me which one is your weakest spot, where is your growing edge, and what are you going to do about it? Tell us in the comments below. Thank you all so much. Namaste, namaste. Love you.